Hello, uh, welcome to um, this uh, screencast. In the last screencast, um, we looked at uh, root nodes and kind of the framework of uh, overall patterns. So we talked about unison nodes, octave shapes, and uh, pattern areas or regions. Uh, so just to kind of sum up, we have um, seven octave shapes that fit comfortably in, in a position. And we have uh, five pattern kind of areas that we'll build a lot of different um, uh, scale patterns out of. So um, two, um, there are two of those pattern areas that have um, two octave shapes within them. So seven octave shapes, five uh, pattern areas. All right, so we're going to look at the uh, third. I'm using A as my example note. And the reason I'm doing that is that uh, starting all the way, um, as you can see, to the left here, uh, we have the, uh, the first octave shape on the, on the first three strings. Okay, and then you can see all the way kind of to the right, we have the, the last one. So that, that just kind of gives us a, a little more of a linear look at things. All right. So um, so let's start out here. Um, I'll uh, place these uh, shapes in, and we're going to look at thirds here. OK. So we're here in this area, uh, second position. And we're going to put, um, start with major thirds. All right, so, so here on this, uh, on this screen, we can see that all the, all the thirds have kind of been uh, put in there. And then um, you, we're, what we're going to do is try to get specific with um, each position. All right, so in the, uh, this octave shape here, the third is, is right there. So you could play this with uh, one finger or two fingers. I like to use two fingers oftentimes if I can't, just to kind of have control of the separation of the two notes if I'm playing an arpeggio, let's say. But um, if you're playing a chord, of course, you can hold it down. Or, or if you're playing them together as a, as a harmonic pair, I can hold that down with one finger. All right. so. Um, we're looking at this, this, and and this. So we want to take what we internalize from the the octave shapes, and and try to fit this in. Okay. Now we also have um, a note here below this octave shape, which will talk about a little bit later. But it's a good idea to visualize uh, that as well. And just notice that the third itself, and this will apply to any, any note that we, that we put in here, um, has its own octave shape, uh, which should be familiar to us. All right. So, uh, so now we'll go to the next shape. All right. So we're over here. And so now our third is situated here. Uh, relative to to those two notes. Okay. 
And then we have one also below. So we want to visualize these distances and these, um, these relationships. So I'm going to remove this lower one here. And we'll just keep going through here. So all right, so we have moving this A over here. Okay, and um, and some of these, you know, you might you might um, have a preference, you know, playing a third in a different location. So we're prim primarily focusing here on on the uh, third that's in between the uh, two uh, the two root notes. Okay, so we'll think about this one here. And then um, we can also think about the, the third, which is located above and below um, the, the root notes. OK, so there and there. So whether you're playing these or not, um, kind of the point of this is to visualize and internalize uh, the material. So. Knowing where um, where things are before you go to play them. Um, so, for example, you're not kind of um, trying to find them. You just know where they are. Okay. So. All right. So um, yeah. So a lot of times when I have uh, students, uh, they're. Uh, you know, sliding here and there, um, playing, you know, different notes, trying trying to just find it. So it's it's better to just kind of know where it is rather than, um, you know, hunting it down. Although it can be a good exercise to, to, uh, to explore and and look for things. But ultimately, you just want to know for sure where, where things are. All right, so the next uh, shape here, I'll move this one up. OK, so we have the third located here. OK, so these are all major thirds. So this can, this can all be applied to uh, 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 major uh, scales, modes, uh, chords, arpeggios. All right, so oh, let's look at um, the ones that are below and above. So here we have a third below and a third above uh, our octave shape. So we can visualize uh, that. OK, so I'll remove those again. And then I, I will put this all all together uh, so we can see it all at once. But I want to kind of get ourselves working in uh, positions and just seeing one thing at a time. All right, so um, so we're going to move this note down here. Oh, wrong string there. OK, so we've got a uh, third string. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this third right where right where it was. This is comfortable uh, to play. Oh, I'm off by a string and a fret. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So yeah, so here we are. Uh, second uh, or fourteenth fret, third string. Okay, so we have the uh, the third in the octave shape, and then I will uh, place the third above the octave. OK, so you can see these, uh, the thirds that I'm putting in here um, 
form their own octave shapes, which are familiar. So if you've um, worked through those octave shapes that I talked about in a previous screencast, then uh, those will automatically be kind of familiar, and we're just kind of like over overlapping um, or seeing how the octave shapes uh, kind of relate to each other. Okay, so um, so we'll move this note down here. So the fifth string root note is moving to the sixth string, and then we'll move this uh, third over here. It's down here. Okay, and then uh, let's put another another one in here above the octave shape so we can visualize that. All right, great. So um, we'll move this root note, this A, here, to the uh, fourth string, fourth string, uh, 19th fret, so, so right there. And then that third can kind of remain there. And then um, I'll place that above here. Okay, so we can see how that that works. Okay, so let's, um, let's fill in some more of these. Um, Okay, so this is an octave above our, our highest note. This is this note right here. Okay, and so I will um, kind of fill in our, our root notes so we can kind of see the overall picture, which we're already kind of seeing in the, in the uh, uh, pattern above here, but I'll just write these in. Okay, and uh, yeah, in this video, I'll include all 19th frets, I think, in the last video. Uh, the 19th fret got cut off a little bit. Okay, so there's our kind of overall uh, shape. So let's fill in all of, all of these thirds, which you can kind of already see up here. But uh, we'll fill all of these in. Yeah, so we're looking at um, thirds and uh, not, not really thinking about uh, anything else. So we're kind of working on intervals, and so what I'll, I'll do is is uh, gradually uh, work through. So two thirds, uh, and then uh, flat thirds, Okay, and, and then we'll talk about uh, fifths, flat fifths, uh, sharp fives, and then seven. So we'll keep keep working our way up. So let me see, make sure I got uh, everything here. All right, looks like uh, that's pretty good. All right, so this is um, 
this is how the major third um, looks. So from uh, from a root note to a third or a one to uh, to a three, and um, you know, notice too that um, let's take let's take an octave shape here. So draw a circle. Around a couple of notes. So if we have, oops, I'm drawing a line. Okay, that should be good. All right. So if I draw a, um, okay, it's decided to draw that as a white uh, circle. Okay, so if I draw a circle around that one, for example, um, we're going to notice that the third here is kind of the same shape. Uh, right here. Okay, so um, one thing that you might try to do is um, Take a take a root note. Let's say this one. Think about the position and and see how it kind of intersects with the uh, interval you're looking at. So, for example, uh, that one there. So, um, so these two. Try to relate these two. And then it's kind of helpful if the uh, if the shapes are, are are a little different. So like this this shape is the same as uh, as this shape. So when you're practicing it, uh, you might try playing one octave shape and then trying to visualize it and then leave it and then try to play another octave shape. So one that kind of intersects, but um, I, I like to try to visualize the, uh, a shape that's different than the one I'm, the one I'm on. But of course, you can uh, do one that's the same as well. OK, so, so another one here. Um, let's say we're looking at, at this shape. So you could play that with fingers one and four let's say, and then try to hold that uh, visualization in your mind's eye of the, the spaces where those are located, and then play the next one, which would be here, um, and maybe play that with two and four, and, and maybe go back and forth between those uh, interval shapes. So, uh, and this is working towards internalizing and, and like I said, knowing, knowing where things are. Okay, so um, oh yeah, then uh, let's try another example. Let's say playing this one and moving into uh, this one here. I'm just kind of going back and forth. So uh, you know, two and four, and maybe one and three down below. You can highlight these down here too. So let's say you play these root notes with uh, fingers two and four, and then you kind of try to switch into uh, the three, the octave shapes there. Okay, and um, and just kind of keep keep on going with that. This one here, you know, maybe this one here. So anything you can do to internalize and just uh, know where um, where the major thirds are, and then uh, when when you combine that with uh, let's say major seven or flat seven or 
whatever combination of fifth, uh, sharp five, um, then you ha really have an idea of how things uh, kind of lay out and the specifics of how they work on the on the neck. All right, so let me uh, clear out some of these highlights here. And, and then, um, you know, keep in mind, so we're looking at A, but um, keep in mind that we can um, find this relationship in different parts of the neck. So the markings here, so you 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, 15, 17, 19, and so on. Um, will help you to um, think about these um, patterns as they lay out specifically on the neck as well. So they have the these relative uh, shapes. So you want to see, okay, in D, for example, this root note on the fifth string intersects with that marker on the fifth fret. And then the third kind of sits in between two markers on the on the fourth string, uh, the three and the five, uh, first three and five, five there. So then we can um, not only know the the relative shapes, but uh, specifically where they uh, they fall on the neck. So um, and that ties into also uh, knowing the notes. So this would be D and F sharp, for example. All right, so let's try another one here. So G lays out like this. C. F. B flat. E flat. A flat. D flat, F sharp, B, E, and then we're back to A. All right, so kind of knowing how these um, these layout and and all that. So in the the next video, I'll talk about thirds, but or minor thirds, flat thirds, but. Um, yeah, so just to give you a preview, um, you know, what things to come. If you added a fifth to this, you'd have uh, the the major triad. If you added a sharp five, you had an, you'd have an augmented triad. Uh, if you had a five and a, a flat seven, you have a, a dominant um, arpeggio or, or chord, depending on what you're doing. Um, if you had a, let's say, a sharp five and a flat seven, okay, then you'd have a, a, a possibly a dominant chord uh, with a raised fifth. Uh, let's see, did I put the major seven in with a five? So major seven with a five or with a sharp five, okay. So you could see how um, the third is going to, um, uh, knowing where the third is and then building on that is going to really help. So we'll, we'll look at flat thirds next, and then we'll talk about fifths and uh, sevenths. And then, then you'll really have um, uh, a working knowledge of, um, of how everything works. And um, and then you can start building your own uh, voicings and, and things. Uh, you know, you could, rather than like, uh, you know, the approach of, of memorizing a, a ton of different uh, chord shapes, which you do want to do, um, you know, you could say, oh, what if I wanted to create a... Uh, I really wanted to end a tune uh, an A with a uh, sharp 11 on top and a flat 7 and a 9. You know, may I play this and maybe include the fifth string open. So 
if, if you have all of this um, kind of knowledge working, you just um, you can find it on your own rather than referring to um, you know a reference book or something. All right, great. So, um, yep, the root and the third, and just getting comfortable with um, how those two, the shapes that those two um, create when they're um, both uh, available um, to use. All right, great. Well, thanks for um, watching. I'm excited about this uh, screencast series that I'm putting together. Um, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. So right now I'm fo focusing a lot on, uh, on YouTube, trying to build uh, as many videos as I can and try to be as helpful as I can. Uh, so uh, new subscribers, certainly welcome. And um, see, I'm up to over 500 videos, a lot of them are short videos, and I'm, I'm doing some live streaming too, so if you subscribe, then uh, you can get uh, notified that I'm, that I'm uh, live, and then uh, uh, there's a chat feature so you can a ask a question, and also on my website, fairprints.com, which I'm working to, uh, to improve that as well, and uh, there's a, um, chat feature on that as well. So if I'm online, you can, um, you can find me uh, there and send, send me a line and I'll respond. All right, well, thanks again for, for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, welcome your comments and your questions. Thanks again.